How's it going guys? Today I'm gonna show you oh there's dirt on the screen. How's it going fellas? Today I'm gonna show you how you can shoot a professional product photo shoot with your mobile phone and easily charge 10 to 15 grand for it. Uh Sri Lanka rupees, not dollars. <laughs> Oh, you. Said, my name is Shut up! Some of you guys have been like, uh, Lyra, but you've got this really expensive light. Uh, so it's kind of not the same thing. The lights that I showed you how to make for 5,000 rupees or something like that. We are gonna use the soft box, but soft boxes are easy to get. You can use a massive sheet if you don't want. I'm shooting this on your own. Get your mom to hold a massive sheet in front of you. You can do the same thing. It doesn't matter, you just need a, whatever. Soft boxes aren't as expensive. You don't need one this as big as this one. It's not expensive, it's not 100,000, it's five grand. It's, it's just tied in there. Look at all this soft light. It's not a hundred grand, it's like five grand and people used to, I used to roll up with this thing at shoots and stuff and people probably thought I was like having this expensive light. It wasn't expensive at all. <laughs> but I want to formally apologize to my girlfriend for not wearing a hat. It's a little difficult to do with all of this. So I, I'm sorry. <laughs> set up, I need to set this part up. So a couple of years back, I got these bristle boards. Actually last year, I got these bristle boards. 80 bucks each. Uh, I've been mean, used them for hundreds and hundreds of shoots. You can see all the stains on them right now. So let me set that up and then I'll show you guys how I do the rest. So we used a bit of tape, taped it onto the wall and this is gonna be the backdrop. So what I'm doing is I'm shooting this. So I've chosen a backdrop that isn't the same color so that I can, you know, it'll be easy for me to manipulate on Photoshop. Is I've moved this light as close as possible as I can to this frame so that I can get like a good light and to make sure that, you know, all the shadows in the back are soft. We haven't got any harsh shadows. Uh, so that's what it, it looks like right now through this camera. I'm just vlogging right now and I haven't like set the color balance and stuff. But this is the setup that I'm essentially going for. Massive light source, product, backdrop. As you can see, I'm gonna use my phone, keep it right in front here. Uh, I've turned it upside down so the, cam the camera will be a little lower and just snap the picture. I'm gonna keep the camera down and try and get the bright picture. Um, so give me a sec. This is the part where a lot of people tend to, you know, complain about or struggle. Uh, simply because this is the make or break. When you're into photography and if it, when you're doing it professionally, you're never always going to get the perfect image. You're going to need to know how to recover exposure or, you know, like remove something that you didn't intend to be on that uh, picture. The client's going to be like, you know, why is this tiny screw on the table? I need this out of the way and stuff like that. So this is the part where you need to go on YouTube, go online, Google and start learning section by section you need to learn how to use the tools that you have like photoshop and lightroom to you know to make your career this is the make or break this is one of the main reasons why i made a video before where people get discouraged because they don't know how to handle uh, post-production i'm a huge advocate for especially when it comes to photography and videography first see if you have the patience to learn the nitty-gritty or to learn the tools such as you know, Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom. See if you have the patience to learn all of that first. I've always had the privilege of buying really nice equipment simply because I didn't have rent to pay and I live with my parents and stuff like that. But every time I bought my equipment, it didn't make me a better guitarist just because I bought expensive guitar. It didn't make me a better photographer just because I went and bought a new camera. So this is where you need to not buy a camera and buy yourself something like a really good phone and test your test your patience with learning stuff like this. You might find out that you're not really cut out for this. So I'm gonna walk you guys through how I took this picture and made it into the final product. I'm not very good at teaching Photoshop. I tried a million times before to try to teach you guys, but I'm not very good at it. So I'm gonna show you all the steps that I do. And guys, you have to be a little well versed with Photoshop to understand this or get through this. So let's get right into it. Quality and all this, this the video of me actually shooting, the white balance is probably off, the picture profile is off, the light is probably not on point. So, my, so uh, forgive the low quality video, but 
you know what i'm trying to focus is on focus on is the the picture so i'm just really quickly trying to record as much as i can uh and just give you guys as much info once you have the pictures loaded into lightroom i always start with lightroom because lightroom has this really cool tool i know photoshop probably has it somewhere as well it has this lightroom has this transform tool where you can draw vertical lines along vertical lines in a picture and it like warps it so that it's perfectly squares in the rect the right angles or right angles and not like warp and that's very important when it comes to product photography especially if you're shooting something dead straight because your your mind psychologically tends to pick up things if they are you know like wonky a bit so i go onto this transform uh tab on the column on the right hand here and, and click on this grid here and then i can start drawing as you can see it magnifies a bit i can start drawing these uh the lines on the side and immediately you see as soon as i drag and let the other side go it warps it into now the all on the both sides of the cans are you know a lot more even and i'm going to do that uh, to the top as well so that we have everything on a, a proper level on a proper grid so where this circles on the can meet the body on top and again on the bottom where the label meets the can at the edge to another line so it warps it slightly and you can take a look at the before and after by clicking y you can see okay it's a you already it makes a huge difference where the cans are proper it has all the right angles proper it's vertically and horizontally the lines are mixed so that's what you need to do with lightroom so i'm going to quickly take this image right click and edit in photoshop oops right click and edit in photoshop first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to crop the picture right i'm going to crop it to 4 by 5 uh that's what instagram takes so i'm going to adjust the cans my main focus is the can so i'm going to adjust the cans uh to make sure that it's in the right place or in the place i want uh so you know dead center a little bit to the bottom as you can see there are back the backdrop is not completely on the same on the entire uh, image so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select uh, these uh, rectangular marquee tool and just going to select the top bit and include a little bit of all the way to the point where i need the greens to overflow on the top right so i'm going to go to edit after that and click on content aware fill what this does is photoshop is really smart it analyzes your picture and fills it in appropriately so just click apply and okay i'm going through this really fast cuz i want to make this concise and i want to just give you guys a general idea and also if you have to know photoshop at least the basics of it to follow along so i hope whoever is listening knows all this and is not hella confused all right and look at the that's pretty amazing what happened right now is pretty amazing right same thing you do it to the bottom so select using this rectangular marquee tool go to edit make sure you add a include a little bit of green on the on the marquee and also go to content content of app fill um and just let photoshop do its thing oh my god look at that look at that already it looks pretty amazing computer is a little bit slow today come on come on work come on look at that already off the bat it's a pretty amazing picture but what we're going to do is we're going to refine this you know make it a little bit better now when it comes to post production you really have to analyze what you're shooting before you can get a good picture out you need to figure out okay where the light is coming in because we shot this we know this but if you didn't shoot this you need to know that the light is coming in the top top left and there's a bit of a shadow that's created on the ground or on the, on the bottom or where the where the, the the cans meet the meet the backdrop there's a bit of shadows there there's a bit of shadows on the right side can made from the main can in the middle so you need to understand this so that you can when you're pasting or cropping and recreating stuff you take this into account first thing i'm going to do is convert this to the right color profile because i don't want to end up uh, having to upload this onto the internet and then the colors are all being bad so first you go to edit convert to profile working srg working rgb srgb that's the profile you want it to be in that's the profile that the internet works on so what's wrong with this image the main thing that's wrong with this image the backdrop texture is not that great that's something that's always very significant with mobile photography that it sometimes sharpens things to a point where it's not very pleasing so how do we 
tackle that. The first thing you need to do is go ahead and cut out the cans onto a separate layer, okay? Because we are gonna tackle the background and the backdrop on a different layer. So let's go ahead and do that. Pen tool is your friend when it comes to Photoshop, even when it comes to After Effects and stuff like that. So let's quickly draw around. If you don't know how to use a pen tool, please. It's so important. I'll try and leave a link in the description for you guys to learn how to use the pen tool properly. Once you have the uh, cans pinned out, this is the most important part. Make sure you go on parts. If you don't know where it is, go to windows and just enable it on parts. And make sure you double click this and save this as three cans or whatever. This is such a useful thing. So let's just say you accidentally uh, clicked out and you have to redo it again. Once you click the cans thing, it has the path to get. So make sure you save your path all the time. Uh, duplicate the layer so that I can always go back if I make, make something wrong. Again, I didn't duplicate it before the pen tool, but because I had that path saved, I can easily click and then see the path comes back. So control click on the path uh, icon and it will bring back the running ants. Control J to duplicate it. So now you have just the cans on a separate layer. Uh, and again, please use the pen tool to get this done. So. What I'm going to do is a trick that a lot of people wouldn't approve, but to get a nice even texture on the background, I'm gonna select the layer that has like the bottom layer, uh, and I'm gonna go to filter, camera raw filter, go straight to the point where you can uh, edit the details and, inc and just go to town with the noise reduction and hit okay. Do that at, at twice or thrice until you get a nice, good, even background that doesn't show too much of the texture, right? So again, go to noise correction. And look at that. Already, you can see that the background is nice and even. Uh, for example, if I bring back the old background, it's very grainy, but with the new one, it's nice and smooth. The colors are really nice. I mean, look at that. That's a really nice backdrop. Now, if you really want to clean things out a little bit more, uh, you can always use your, you know, clone stamp and your patch tool and do all of that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, you know, like even out the backdrop a little bit even more so that it's not distracting. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to start creating solid layers, right? Uh, click on this yin yang sign at the bottom. Uh, click solid layer and just hit OK. And then go to the mask tool and completely color it in the color black if you don't know how to use masks on solid colors go and uh, learn how to do that try and add a link at the bottom so double click on the solid which will uh, give you the option to change it so what i would do is just, i would use the color picker and just click on the background that i'm trying to get and hit okay now the background is going to be that color so i'm going to take a brush oh and also Gonna increase the hardness to zero and increase the flow to 100%. Okay, that didn't look that great. So what I'm gonna do is this general area, I'm gonna start coloring in. Uh, but as you can see, when you go below here, it gives you a bit of a, a weird, weird line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo, okay? And I'm gonna re reduce the hardness, let's say about there. Right. Oops. So now I'm going to just paint this top right side with this color. You know, like that. So it's not too noticeable, but you get a very even spread. Right? So this is what it looks like. So the right top side of it's been painted in. So I'm going to do, I'm going to add another solid layer. Bring that to the bottom. Uh, again, color it entirely, the mask area in black, so it disappears. So what I want to do is double click and match the dark greens, right? At the bottom, it's very dark. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to match that color and I'm going to take a brush tool and then start coloring this, this in. So 
So what I'm gonna make sure I do is I'm gonna make sure that I don't color in the shadows, right? That's very important that the shadows don't get colored in because to make, you need to leave the shadows in the picture of the can. Obviously towards the left top, the dial is gonna be a lot less light. So I'm gonna choose a lighter color. So I'm gonna go again, add another solid color. Hit okay. Uh, color the entire thing in black and then double click and col pick a color that's slightly lighter, not too light. This is what it's going to be okay my final image is gonna be this I'm okay with a bit of background in the back and I bring a bit of white hair yeah. a bit of white light leaking from side I'm fine with this background bit of bit of shadow on the ground that's fine oh my god this is 25 minutes of me trying to fix it. Oh, that took such a long time. Once we have the background the way we like it, depending on you know how we have this color mask, I can remove the original background to show you how much of it I've changed. Now, what we can do is we can flatten this. You can flatten it, you cannot flatten it, depending on what you want. I'm gonna flatten it because I'm not gonna go back to this. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna merge the layers, and I have, you know, already this picture is looking pretty amazing right so let's take it a little bit further i'm gonna i'm gonna merge this one layer because i can always go back uh, i'm gonna merge these two layers as well already this itself is a pretty good image now the reason i wanted to have a different colored background to the product is so i can you know manipulate the colors each so i can go back to camera raw filter make sure everything's recording and go to the color tab and, you know either remove saturation of just the background what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the colors of the green a bit to a slightly more pleasing color to the eyes i guess uh, okay and that that's how you can change whatever back you can add whatever background color you want to this and the best part is it doesn't remove the fact that the bag it doesn't uh, seem like the background is slightly fake okay that's it you know that's how you you know take a picture from your phone and make it look a little bit more professional uh so what if you want to add that splash effect that i showed you so okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first save this as a jpeg right so i'm going to control shift s uh and save this as let's say main image right i'm just going to save it as jpeg uh, save highest quality okay so okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a new photoshop layer i'm gonna select uh a high, a high resolution i'm gonna select portrait mode and uh, basically create this so what i'm gonna do is first crop it to four by five that's what instagram takes and i'm gonna drag and drop that picture that i just uh took right or just save it's gonna be a little small that's okay resize it so this is the image that you finally have right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to google uh as you can see water splash and then on the on the, on the first page itself you see this png what you're going to search is water splash png you need a png file that has a see-through or like that doesn't have a background right so i already have this downloaded drag this file into photoshop what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this exactly put it where I want it right that seems fine so obviously there's a lot more work to do for the first thing you need to do is you need to save this file as your main photoshop file so I'm going to hit control say s which brings up and I'm going to rename this name this is main I already have one I'm going to overwrite it and name it main yes replace and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna create 
I'm gonna save another Photoshop file with just the splash in black and white. So I'm gonna hide the bottom layer, bring up my yin yang sign and bring up the uh, black and white um, effect. And I'm gonna reduce some of the values here. I'll leave a link in the bottom for you guys to understand why. I'm just gonna increase the contrast of this black and white image. And I'm gonna hit Control Shift S this time and save it as a separate file. That's and name it as water mapping. Um, click save. I've already had a file that I'm going to replace. So now I'm going to close this and bring up that main Photoshop file again. I'm going to first cut out uh, the cans. For this, I'm just going to do a rough cutout. So I'm going to use the uh, quick selection tool and just, you know, select maybe just the blue parts, the labels. You'll see why. So I'm going to Control J and that will cut it out into a separate layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to displace or distort this image to how you would essentially see through like splashing water, right? So the way you're going to do that is going to you're going to go to filter, you're going to go to distort, and you're going to go to displace. And I'm going to mark the horizontal scale and vertical scale as 30. Stretch to fit. Repeat edge pixels. Hit OK. It'll open this dialog box. What you need to do is click, select the water mapping. Uh, Photoshop file right so you do that Photoshop will do its thing and it'll you know give like a distorted image like this so what you're gonna do first is align it for some reason it misaligns it align it to the image okay and I'm, and obviously once you bring the other file in you will so what I want to do is I want to put the splashing water behind the first the can in the back or the main can so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first uh go back to my main hide everything else take my pen tool and just pin out the the main can okay if you guys don't know how to use the pen tool please go and learn that first Again, okay, just like I said before guys, make sure you save this part as can one or whatever. So you always have that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back the splash and I'm gonna push it to the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this and add a mask to the PNG, right? Go and control click on the part so you get the running end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color black using the brush tool and it disappears. Right, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a mask tool to the distorted layer. Let's call it distorted. I'm gonna add a mask to that. I'm gonna first control D to get rid of the running ants. Ants, uh, control, click the path to bring back the running ants. Click on and then color out the distortion as well. So as you can see on both of these black areas, I've drawn, been drawn on the mask, so you can't see uh, that on the image. Now, it looks okay, but to make sure to add a more realistic touch to it, you need to replicate the shadows you see on the image to um, the water as well, because as you can see, if I go back here on the side here, this doesn't look realistic because if you hide the layer, you see there's like, okay, if you hide all these layers, you see there's like a shadow falling on the on the, on the right side of the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a normal blank layer to it and I'm going to go to select, sorry, go to layer and click, uh, click on create clipping mask. So everything that I do here is only going to affect the water splash. For example, if I take a brush tool and if I just color black it's only going to color that uh, splash so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the flow of my brush which means I'm gonna have to click more than once to get like a proper effect on it yeah, so I'm gonna reduce the flow to 18 and reduce the size of the brush and I'm gonna try and color again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back this can so now this can is, is is selecting the can so whatever i draw is only drawing within the can so what i need to do is i need to inverse this selection right so go to select and click on inverse now it's uh selecting everything except the can uh, in the middle so what i want to do is i want to slightly have a really feathered edge 
I guess and then start oops start drawing the black in so what I want to do is select black color start drawing the black in and the edges so you start seeing that okay the water is replicating the shadows that are falling on the can so it's hiding it behind that so let's go ahead and draw it in. so now it's, if it's a little too much you can always go back here and reduce the opacity so now it looks a little bit more realistic so that's how you add a little bit of realism to your uh, edits right so now you need to focus on the splash you know the splash is blue in color but the background is not blue maybe the can is a little blue but that's it so what you need to do now is make sure that the water is reflecting the color in the background that's a way it's a very easy way to do it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to again flatten these layers i'm going to merge it because i like it if it's you know in one layer and i'm going to duplicate it right so this is going to be the green and this is going to be the blue water okay so let me bring the green to the top and i'm going to hide the blue for a sec now everything outside that's, that doesn't have a can in the back should be green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a hue uh, effect and I'm going to go back to layer again and create a clipping mask so that it, it only affects the, uh, the splash and I'm going to start changing this hue, see how the colors change. I'm going to drag it back so it matches the background color a bit. You can mess around with the saturation and this and that just to, you know, bring it to whatever color that you like so now okay that's the green one okay and i'm gonna merge the layers again because you know i like merging it but if you're if, if you're not sure don't merge it because you can't go back and edit it so i'm gonna do the same thing to the blue but the blue already you know reflects the blue color of the this one so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna introduce a mask this png i love masks and i'm gonna just color out the parts where the can is over so bring a brush and oops bring a brush and increase the flow to 100% uh, and then just color out all the parts where the water is just overlapping So as you can see, there's no splash right now. That's overlapping. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color out the blue bits, right? I'm going to add another mask layer here. Increase the size of my, oopsie, I'll reduce the hardness a bit and just Let's go. Now, when I bring back the green, and there you have it. That was a long video, but essentially that is what it is. And uh, you can, I'm gonna go ahead and merge the layers because this is my final. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back the mask tool, and there are some water. You can clean it up, right? You can clean it up the way you want to and guys there you have it that's how you do it that's how you get it's a bit of a long video i hope you guys could skip through it and that is how you get the final product final image jpeg save okay that's how you do it guys if you found this useful go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell i hope i convinced you to start you know shooting with your phone to see if you have the itch to post produce and go and learn photoshop stuff like that and yeah see you guys in the next one peace wait that's not my sign off it's uh <laughs>